I am Vagabond07, and this is Elite Dangerous. Fleet carriers have the potential to completely change the meta around Elite Dangerous, drawing players together and reshaping the bubble. Even if fleet carriers only act as a refit, respawn, and mass travel mechanic, they open huge opportunities for squadron attacks on Thargoid space, reaching pristine untapped mining resources and exploration on a level that we haven't seen yet. As exciting as fleet carriers are, there are a few possible drawbacks. First off, griefing. Griefing, or non-consensual PvP, has long been a problem within Elite Dangerous. This mostly takes the form of experienced players targeting or seal clubbing new players in vastly lower powered ships. Most griefers don't understand that they are actually griefing. To many of them, they feel they are imposing some code of conduct on players who own an anaconda, but are ranked competent or below. Forgetting the fact that you are not required to participate in combat to enjoy Elite Dangerous. It has long turned open into a ghost town. In fact, during the battle for the Witch at Nebula, players were rewarded for clearing out a system of Thargoids in less than 24 hours with a planetary base that had a shipyard. Within hours, griefers transferred their ships out there and started targeting explorers and anti-Xeno ships. Players retreated into private and I couldn't find another commander in an AX conflict zone to save my life. That was just one shipyard in one region of space. Desiat has turned into a griefing hotspot with Shinrik to Destra, a longtime griefer hot zone. Imagine what Desiat, Ark, and Shinrat Dessa are going to be like with fleet carriers full of griefer squadrons. The solution is simple and easily deployed within the game's already established mechanics and lore. All ships fly with the Pilots Federation navigation computer, which doles out permits to pilots and approves access to systems. Instituting a fleet carrier permit lock on engineering and power play headquarters systems is the only way for these systems to remain accessible by all players. If some measure of control is not put into place, it will make open an even more hostile place to be. Second, huge cost. As massive a boon as fleet carriers would be, placing a huge cost on them will exclude smaller squadrons from a huge part of the gameplay. Many squadrons are around 15 to 20 players, with the big boys like the Fatherhood and Pixel Banded Security Forces numbering in at over 1,000. If FDEV puts a cost of 10 billion credits or more on fleet carriers, these groups will not even blink. With over a thousand players, if each player chipped in 10 million, which can be earned in a couple hours, they would have 10 billion credits in a handful of hours. For squadrons on the 15 to 20 player range, each player would have to contribute over 666 million. While still not an impossible sum of money, it is still a lot for a squadron of newer players to earn. Remember, it takes around 50 to 100 hours of gameplay to truly master flight, let alone combat. Placing a massive cost that only huge squadrons can achieve in a reasonable timeline would exclude a considerable chunk of the player base, while also rewarding players who use exploits, cheats, and bots to make credits. My hope is that the base fleet carriers will cost around 1.5 to 2 billion credits, roughly 10 times the cost of a cutter, with upgrades driving the cost up to over 10 billion with a fully A-rated fleet carrier. This would allow smaller squadrons the chance to participate the new gameplay while also rewarding larger squadrons for their membership, but also provide a path for squadrons to progress on and build up their shared commodity. Third, tunnel vision. If maintenance and upkeep are extremely high cost, then the squadrons, and therefore the player base, will be solely focused on their fleet carriers, driving down player experience and participation in areas like exploration, trade, and BGS management. Whole exploration-based squadrons will be forced to turn in constantly to pay the upkeep, significantly tightening their exploration range. This will force them to decide on owning a fleet carrier and continuing on without one. Fleet carriers need to add to and facilitate the gameplay that is already present in Elite Dangerous while providing balanced cost to benefits. And this is an area where FDEV has not done well with in the past. Don't get me wrong, I am really excited by fleet carriers and can't wait for the December release. I've been grinding credits since the 2017 Frontier Expo. I won't stop until the release or my squadron owns one. I just hope that the cost and management around them will be realistic for players, especially the average Elite Dangerous player. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and share. It really helps. Again, thanks for watching. I'm Vagabondo7, and I'll see you next time.